Hello and welcome to the City Newsroom. My name is Zoe Abubeidu Ado. And I am Nana Tufua Boateng. Coming up. We'll take you on a tour of the Ghan East Municipal Hospital, which has seen a reduction in the number of patients treated here as the national active cases decline. Now, there are very few, you know who and who is there. You see them passing, you know, you can identify them easily. So how many patients are you dealing with now? Currently, I have two. President Takufuado vows to deal ruthlessly with persons who foment trouble in the December polls. Also coming up, top government officials from the Volta region receive threats from secessionist group Homeland Study Group Foundation after the attack and burnt down buses belonging to the state transport company in Ho on Tuesday. And later, government rescues over 2,000 Ghanaians stranded in Lebanon. Why did we get into the state of calling SOS for to evacuate? as many as 2,262 people between June 19th and September 18th. The details of the stories now. As the country works to figure out the Western Togoland puzzle, one of the secessionist groups, Homeland Study Group Foundation, seems to be intensifying its efforts. Well, following last Friday's attacks in which one person died, police officers brutalized the many civilians uh, got injured. The group on Tuesday attacked and burned down buses belonging to the state transport company, STC, in Ho. Now, the police service, however, says it has begun investigations into the matter. City News has also cited threat issuing posters targeted at the NDC MP for North Tong Samuel Okujito Ablakwa, Energy Minister John Peter Amewu and Volta Regional Minister Dr. Archibald Lecha. City News' Benjamin Aklama reports from the Volta region. Barely four days after the attack on two police stations within the Volta region, the Mepa police station and the Vayme police station, uh, where guns were stolen and uh, the official vehicle of uh, the police and the district assembly in Notong were taken away. Uh, we've had an attack on the state transport corporation here in the Volta regional capital of Ho. The official, I mean the, the vehicle, one of the buses of the state transport company was touched this night around 1 a.m. towards 2 a.m. by a group of uh, people suspected to have come from the Western Togoland uh, group or the group advocating for the Western Togoland and they were here uh, this night firing uh, guns into the air and beating up the security man on duty and setting this vehicle ablaze. Uh, the, ve the bending of the vehicle extended to the next one but we understand this was the only one that was set ablaze. The reason why they are doing this is basically that they are advocating for a Western Togoland state. According to them there was a pre colonial Western Togoland area which joined Ghana by referendum and according to them their publicit had expired and so that there should be another engagement on that matter and that's why they're undertaking these activities. The security is currently heavily present here in the regional capital as they are in the North Tong area where the issues had occurred last Friday. Richard Ahiafo is the station manager of the STC here in Ho and we'll be finding out from him what exactly transpired and what report is received from his men. Good evening, sir. Yeah, good evening. Okay, so tell us what happened. Ah, uh, um, bus is being burnt. That's what happened here this dawn. And uh, I was calling to the news, and I sh usually need to show up. So usually we come early in the morning to lose that trade, but then. Today was another day. Um, my boys called that there were guns being fired everywhere. So usually you are the manager, so you need to show up. And I was here as usual. So basically, I got here, my buses were in flames. And uh, we got the fire service to put it off. And as we speak, uh, the security agents are the ones handling the issue center. 
we are hoping that they do a good uh, investigation and get back to us. Let's talk about the economic aspect. On a normal day, yes. how much would you have made from here that you have lost today because you've not worked? In France, I wouldn't like to put my figures out, but then it's, it's an appreciative uh, figure. And it's very sad that uh, Volta Region uh, STC, uh, people are now with us and we are making a market and such a situation will put us off the market for this few days. Maybe today is a day and uh, we don't hope that this will repeat itself in the near future. So we are talking to the security agencies that are in charge of this case and uh, we hope from today, maybe later in the evening, you'll see different security set up here uh, for, to safeguard the properties we have. Other than that, we need to move the buses from here to a safer location to help us. I don't know, we, are, we are not certain what may happen later in the evening. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, now, finally, like you said, you are becoming uh, the most preferred uh, means of transport, especially between Hu and Accra. Yeah. What, what's your word to the, the uh, commuting, commuting tra uh, community out there who would have wanted to patronize your services today and, I mean, have been denied such an opportunity? Uh, we are sorry, and uh, the situation is not our doing, but that is out of our control. And we love them, and we hope that uh, when we come back, we'll come in good faith. And we hope, and uh, we are just doing this just to prevent the accidents or other things that could happen on the way. Well, uh, our drivers are traumatized because of what happens, so it's not wise to put passengers and their lives at risk. So this is why we need to back off today and maybe tomorrow, depending on what management decides that we will follow due course, yes. So customers are number one, yes. Thank you very much for your time. We are grateful. So that's uh, Mr. Richard Ahia for his, uh, the station manager of the STC here in the Volta Regional Capital Hall. So aside the STC, which is losing business today as a result of uh, the happenings from yesterday night, businesses in the area are also unable to operate today. These businesses uh, largely depend on commuters or, or uh, people who travel who come here to purchase tickets and wait on their buses. They purchase from those people and as you can see their shops are locked and nothing is happening for them today and that's because of the happenings. The management of the STC, STC say that uh, they are in consultation with their security agencies and with their top management and will decide when to resume operations. The Asogli Traditional Council says it may be forced to unleash its warriors to help protect the territorial integrity of the state. The chiefs of Asogli State in a press conference called on the government to swiftly stop the activities of their secessionist group. And according to the chiefs, the recent activities of the group could best be described as criminal and must be treated as such. On behalf of the Apocalypse, the we have the 14th. And the chiefs of Asabi State, I wish to let you know that we condemn the act that to have been take, to have been uh, taken place in this region by the Western Togoland group. In no uncertain terms, the roadblocks. The burning of lorry ties in various parts of the Volta region, the attack on the police stations at Mepe and other places, these were criminal acts which we urge the government to conduct investigation and those involved to be made to face the full rigors of the law. And we also advise those people who are doing this criminal act to use the proper channels to address their issues if they have any. The Assembly State Council is ready to deploy the warriors of Assembly State to protect the territories of Assembly State in collaboration with the securities of the nation. Today we are coming to you from the Ga East Municipal Hospital. This 100-bed facility um, was set aside for treating of COVID-19. We've come here to assess what the situation looks like. 
Ghana's active case count now stands at 530. The numbers were in their thousands previously. And we came here, spoke to patients. It was a very busy place. Is the situation still the same? So join us as we go in there and speak to um, administrators. We'll try and speak to some patients and speak to some frontline health workers as well to find out how the fight against COVID-19 has been here at this facility. I'll be speaking to the head of clinical department here at the facility and she will paint a picture of what the situation here looks like now. Let's have a quick conversation with her. Can you tell us, um, this place used to be very busy um, in the early stages of COVID-19 between April and June. What is the situation here like now? Okay, so for the month of September, so far we have received 625 patients, but out of the 625, 621 has been discharged. It means that now, as we are talking here, we have only patients admitted on ward there. So out of this total of patients, 46 has come from airport. So those people that have tested positive on their country, but on arrival here, their test has become positive. All right, so let's walk through the facility so you give us um, a feel of what the situation used to look like and what it is now. Okay. All right, so yes. what, what do we go to? Uh, first, we are going to the OPD. That is where we are receiving our patients for uh, check-in. Okay. In case that they are showing any symptoms or have any concern, they can come here. We have two doctors so far here. Okay. And then we assess our patient and see the way forward. So we'll be going through, um, this is the OPD. So when, I, when the patient comes, do they have to show um, any sign um, or sheet of paper, or paper that they were here? Yes. Yes, they have their discharge uh, sheets, mm -hmm. so they come here and then this is the nursing station. She is the one who receives the patient and then assess the patient in the first instance and direct them to the doctors okay. on duty. So for most of them who come here, is it that they are having um, a reoccurrence or they are experiencing something that they think is post-COVID related? Yes, most of them. Doc, so tell me, what um, does the numbers when it comes to staff strength look like now? The number of doctors you used to have and what you have currently? Yes, at the beginning, our team of doctors was very big. We have doctors from Kolebu Teaching Hospital who came to support he us here. Right now, most of the doctors have gone back to their hospitals, and it's just some of them that are still supporting us and the recovery area here. We will now make our way out and see what um, the environment looks like now compared to what it was previously when my colleague Omaru Sanda Amadu came here. Still at the Ga East Hospital, um, you can see clear demarcations. The area you see now is for uh, patients. To my left, that is where the doctors and nurses are. The place is relatively calm, quiet now, so peaceful, very serene atmosphere. Unlike what used to be the case months ago, where you could see them playing ludo, they, they were chatting among themselves, sitting outside, and even had some physical um, exercises or activity. Um, I understand that most of the patients here now are those who tested positive at the airport. So I'll be speaking to one of them um, to find out um, where he came from and how the news got to him. Tell us where you came from. I come from Belarus. Okay. Um, okay. And did you have your COVID test from there? Yeah, I did. And what was the result? I was negative. negative. Yeah. How many days did you do it before you did the second one here? So, three days. Three days? Yeah. So were you surprised when they told you that you had tested positive, considering the fact that you tested three days before? Yeah, I was very surprised. I was a bit confused, let's say. I was like, how? But later, mm, talking to them, the, the nurses talking to me, and then I just relaxed a little bit. You've been here for how many days now? 
this is my 11th day. Thank you so much um, and we wish you a, a speedy recovery and hopefully we'll speak to you when you're discharged. Thank you very much. So that was a patient here at East Hospital um, speaking to us here. Um, Dr. Kisipra is one of the doctors um, who was at the forefront. Um, she's still a frontline health worker and she has been here since April, I guess. Yes, April. Yes, April. And she has been attending to COVID patients. So just a brief interaction with her to find out. The place is relatively quiet and calm now. Yes. What were the early numbers like? How many patients oh. are you taking care of like in a in day? In a day. Okay, so so usually what we do is we review them every single day and then in a day we had up to 60 so the average was about 45 patients in a day and we're usually two doctors on duty for a day and then there, there were a lot of things we had to do for them we have to book them for their retesting you have to run some basic labs for them you have to review with them and then tell them what their labs were because of course they have to know what yeah what's up with them and then we're also doing the discharges based on the two negative um, tests and so you have to keep track who has one negative, who has two negative, who can go home, how are they going home, are they going with public transport, are they going with ambulances, calling an ambulance. It was very hectic. Wow. It was extremely hectic. So you understand why I like this now? <laughs> yeah. So yes, before there was a lot of things that we had to do. But now it looks like things are stable now. Their treatments are now stable. You know what to do. Yes, we know we are discharging them by the 14-day criteria now. And then... Now I think it's good. <laughs> so um, now you're able to, I'm sure you're able to even tell them by name and who is who. Yes, yes, yes. I mean previously. Previously it was a challenge because 45 patients and then they were all wearing masks because we encouraged them to as part of the COVID protocols. Yes, and then you have to know them, you have to know your patients. You know, sometimes someone will come and sit in front of you and you confuse him with someone else and then you have to keep asking. I thought it was very uncomfortable to keep asking your patients their names uh, over and over and over again. And now there are very few, you know who and who is there. You see them passing, you know, you can identify them easily. So, so how many patients are you dealing with now? Currently, I have two. On my end, I am managing the uh, mild cases, and then the ER, I think that's one patient. So in all, we have about three today. Oh. More can come in. What will be your advice? Now, people still think COVID-19 it's not real. It's still not real. I have had patients come here with positive tests, repeat positive, and they still don't believe they have COVID because they are asymptomatic. So I think because of the fact that they are asymptomatic, it makes them kind of relax and it makes everyone else, I mean, relax and then let down their guards, which is not a good thing because we are all trying to, I mean, get rid of COVID. Yes. So I, I, I don't feel happy. I don't feel comfortable because my numbers could increase easily again. And like I said, I like this situation. I don't want that. So I would admonish everyone to adhere to the protocols, the nose mask, handling the nose mask especially. Would you say the place is boring now? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I would say, yeah, I would say the place is boring because the environment in itself is very serene, yes, and then the patients are also fewer and they are always in their rooms, like before they come and sit out and then we chat with them, but now everyone is in their own corner and then we just wait it out. <laughs> until someone needs help or until a new patient comes. Thank you so much, Dr. Kisipra, and we wish you all the best and congratulations to you and thank the team you. as well. Yes, thank you. All thank right. you. So you heard Dr. Kisipra there, and she's been outlining what the place looks like now. It's relatively very quiet. Let's now bring you a quick report on Ghana's COVID-19 fight so far since it recorded its first case on the 12th of March 2020. It has been six months since Ghana recorded its first case of COVID-19. The news caused anxiety and led to a swift government response. It all started with this announcement on a Thursday night in March. The Minister of Health has confirmed two cases of COVID-19. The cases were confirmed on the 12th of March, that's today, 2020 and the first cases to be reported in Ghana. Over the past six months, Ghanaians have learned to engage in mandatory hand washing, the usage of hand sanitizers, social distancing, and the wearing of nose masks. 
with about 47,000 confirmed cases so far, our lives have clearly not been the same. In the wake of the pandemic, schools were shut down, land, air and sea borders were closed, and social gatherings were cancelled. But to the ordinary Ghanaian, it was the sudden hike in the price of hand sanitizers and Veronica buckets that hit the hardest. I think it's two, um, three cities, right? Yeah, it's three cities. But now they have increased it to ten cities. It's, it's very high. It's very expensive too because this one, it came and in that case, they need to reduce it even for us to buy it more. For them to increase it, that one, they need to help us rather than like this one, they are not helping us. They are not helping us at all. As the cases grew with each day, government became burdened with how to treat infected persons. A three-week partial lockdown was imposed in April. Testing and tracing was ramped up during this period, but the toll the closure of businesses had on the economy was too hard to bear. The numbers continued to spike after the lockdown, shifting the conversation to how to isolate the positive cases. The East Municipal Hospital in Lacroix became the headquarters for COVID-19 treatment. Some private individuals and organizations also donated their properties to be used as isolation centers. But this kind gesture was not always received well. Say a tia sia dia and then a chess say kuni a person yung kuny. If you say a tia se woman I do we baha at say the mafa panye no mafas or move us net with the virus. That's very simple. The person be busy and sana you pen for taking decision. Ghana received one billion dollars from the International Monetary Fund, IMF, to help deal with the pandemic in April. The government also set up a 1.2 billion Ghana CD coronavirus alleviation program with funds from the contingency fund. From these funding sources came free water and electricity for Ghanaians and business support from the National Board for Small Scale Industries. All these interventions were announced via a series of televised addresses from President Nana Ekufuado. Fellow Ghanaians, good evening. However, by June, the government had begun what it called a phased easing of restrictions. Schools were reopened for final year students and churches began physical services. With COVID-19 active cases now dropping below the 1,000 mark, life seems to be returning to normal for Ghanaians. Restrictions continue to fall with the reopening of the country's air borders, restaurants and pubs and contact sports kicking back in. At this pace, one can only expect more easing of restrictions as the days go by. I'm now at the administration block and I'll be speaking to some key persons here in this hospital. They have been at the forefront of fighting COVID-19. How many staff did you have? And we know most health workers across the country tested positive for COVID-19 because they came into direct contact with patients. What was the situation here in the hospital like? So my, the secret of Ganghi's Municipal Hospital is different. So we have hygienists and that person rule at the dolphin area is to disinfect. You disinfect the staff who has come out from the patient room. You disinfect the inanimate objects or the things. And then the staff himself, you disinfect them. Then after you have played your role as a hygienist, you move aside a bit and allow the dolphin instructor to take the role. This dolphin instructor makes sure that he instructs you as to which PP you should take off first, second and third. So since we started from 21st March to date, we only have one staff who has been infected. And... Um, God being so good, 100 and 180 staff were managing COVID. But along the line, we had a lot of um, staff coming on board to support because the caseload were that much. Our highest, I would think, was about almost 90 patients on admission. So we had to manage. They are not just any case, but we have a mixture of mild cases, moderate, severe, and critically ill patients who are admission. So we had more than almost nine, 190. And then um, we have only one person who tested positive. God being so good, this person didn't, I will not say, got the infection in the facility because she was actually out and she has not resumed to work and she got the infection. And once she got the symptoms, she called, it was tested, she was in the house, managed, and when she was declared negative, she joined the staff here. Are you worried with the way the um, protocols have been Yes, yes. Now when you pass out, you see so many people without mask, 
they, they, they had social distancing, they are forgetting about that. So it's like everybody is doing whatever she feels is good for the, them and those things. The people are not complying with the so, uh, protocols at all. Thank you very much. Um, so you had um, two key people here um, at the East Municipal Hospital, and they have told us what the experience here was like and currently um, is like. So I cross over to my colleague, Nana Tufor Boating, who is moving about in town to see how people are adhering to the safety protocols. From two initial cases in March, we got to a period where we were recording over 100 cases daily, uh, taking our total number of confirmed cases into the thousands. Then, of course, there was the revision of the discharge protocols, and now we have active cases below 600. But does that mean that we let down our guard? Are we out of the woods yet? Mind you, health experts have raised concern uh, about uh, people not adhering to the safety protocols. And so we are on the streets of Accra to speak to Ghanaians about what they think. Are we out of the woods yet? Omoshe, as I saw Mosi Arabia, Yare, no friend, it's a covenant tonight. It'll be a throw to the Bia Yeshe. How much you cry me by Michelle because we didn't miss through. As for the sickness, as for me, in my in, uh, in point of my view, it's still there because if it's not there, our head. His Excellency will not be forcing us to wear nose masks. As you are seeing me here, I always wear nose masks because of the job. I'm making noise, I'm shouting, calling passengers, that's why I'm not able to put it. But whenever I'm going somewhere, I put nose masks because I'm afraid. The people that do business here, do you think we've thrown caution to the wind? Are we still protecting ourselves like before? Yeah, as you can see, most of us here are in our nose masks and we are trying to keep everything cool. Yeah, COVID is real. COVID is fact it's real because when you look at other countries it's killed a lot of people and it's real now our active case count is below 600 do you, do you think it's time uh, to take off uh, all the restrictions nah it has to get to zero zero yeah because zero because it started from two and it's ended at a thousand so we still have to keep ourselves safe when the, the government is saying that uh, the articles has reduced. That does not mean we should stop applying the protocols. We must continue till government allow us to to stop. Apart from that, we must continue because you may not know whoever who had that disease. Okay. But generally, what do you see when you go out? Uh, to me, um, people have thrown caution to the wind. We are not wearing the masks. We are not protecting ourselves. It is because people they don't believe. They were saying that uh, COVID-19, uh, coronavirus. In fact, in every uh, society or, uh, the, I mean, the environment in which people live, people doesn't witness people dying because of that disease. So they don't even believe. That's one thing. They don't believe. But when you have education about it, you may, I mean, know how to go about it. Are you still scared as before? No, I'm not. Is that why you're not in your mask? No. If I wear the mask, it's like my ears pain me. I get some headaches too. But when I, I bought a car, I put it on. But when I'm walking like this, I want to be free. With the rate at which our active cases are coming down, do you think it is time for the president uh, to lift the rest of the restrictions? No, 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 no. I don't think so. I don't think so. Why? Why don't you think so? Because if he does, I think it might increase. Yeah, it might increase. Because people will go off their way to do certain things that will bring another problem. So I think for now, the restriction should be there. Now, although all those who have been speaking to have underscored the need to continue adhering to the safety protocols, a careful look at the attitude of Ghanaians on the streets of Accra uh, will show you or will tell you that indeed 
somewhat somehow we've thrown caution to the wind i mean for those who are wearing the max most of them are not wearing it properly uh, some also throw the mask on when they see our cameras social distancing is totally not being adhered to and so more or less there's total disregard for the safety protocols despite the presence of COVID-19 in the country. Now COVID-19 has taken the lives of a number of people including some high profile citizens. In this report we'll tell you the number of deaths so far in Ghana and some of the individuals who have succumbed to the virus. It is evident that the coronavirus pandemic has distorted many, if not all, facets of our lives. Yet, while the rest of us look forward to returning to what we have labeled as the new normal, there are those who have passed away and will not have the luxury of seeing that future, no matter how it looks. 301 Ghanaians are among these people, and some were frontline health workers at post since the emergence of the disease. The likes of consultant physician and former rector of the Ghana College of Physicians and Surgeons, Professor Jacob Plangeru, the former general secretary of the governing New Patriotic Party, Kwejo Ouzwe Friye, affectionately called Sir John, a consultant surgeon with the Trust Hospital, Dr. Richard Kisa, and a specialist pediatrician and medical superintendent at the Kwadaso SDA Hospital, Dr. Harry Boating, and many others succumbed to coronavirus at one point or the other. Take a walk through town and it's obvious that the safety protocols are not being adhered to as they should be. What does government make of this situation and what does the government intend doing about it? Um, um, a good chunk of our isolation centers, according to my brief, are empty or near empty. But you can't exactly close them down yet because we are not done with COVID yet. You still want to keep observing, especially now that there's a second wave in parts of Europe. Uh, so we are grateful that a good chunk of our isolation centers are empty or near empty, but we have to continue to keep an eye on it if it becomes necessary to use them again because we are getting perished the thought some more cases, then you have an opportunity to use them. But if not, and by the time, God willing, we are down to zero, then you may um, you know, decommission uh, some of these isolation centers. We have to step up uh, education so that people don't live under the false... Um, impression that COVID is gone and therefore can go about their daily lives without at least the wearing of the masks. Uh, it is true that as the active cases are dropping and as we are easing restrictions, there is a certain psychological f you know, feeling around that, well, the worst is over and that COVID is gone, but it's not gone. And the only way we can um, step it up is by regularly educating people and engaging them to understand that you have to be on your guard. Stay alert. Meanwhile, as Ghana's active COVID-19 cases keep reducing, the Chief Executive Officer of the Confanochi Teaching Hospital, Dr. Oheneba Owusu-Danso, has urged the general public not to relax the safety protocols in order not to record a second wave of infection. The Confanochi Teaching Hospital is one of the health facilities that was worst hit by the pandemic as 351 of their health personnel were infected. Addressing a conference in Kumase, Dr. Honeba Wusudans noted that the hospital will continue to put strict safety protocols in place to ensure that the hospital does not experience a surge in cases. We should not take for granted the nation's health and success in combating the pandemic and ask the manner that to resolve the these resurgence as is happening in other parts of the world. I would therefore like to urge all Ghanaians not to be complacent but continue to observe the safety protocols as outlined by the Minister of Health to help completely control and eventually eliminate the pandemic in Ghana. Indeed, our staff responded very well to the nation's call to duty, even at the peril of their lives. With 351 personnel to date, testing positive, among which a member unfortunately losing his life to the pandemic. The outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic has had a gripping effect on the fortunes of countries, multinational giants, medium to small-scale industries, etc. 
our treasure, confront the teaching of the has had its fair share of the adverse effects. You're still watching the City Newsroom. My name is Zoe Abubedo Ado. And mine is Nana Tufu Abuati. Still ahead in this bulletin, President Ekufando vows to deal ruthlessly with persons who foment trouble in the December polls. We have the details coming up shortly. Do stay with us. Rigworld Solutions, forging the frameworks of Ghanaian industry. Engineering solutions from the heart of Takrade Kejibil. At Rigworld Solutions, we manufacture industrial bolts and nuts, fasteners, hoses and fittings for the extractive and petrochemical industries. World-class products with local expertise. Locate our factory in Kejibil, of the Takrade Takwa Road. Call 0302-949917 or 0540-107504. Email enquiries at rigworldsolutions.com. Rigworld Solutions, crafted in Ghana, engineered for the world. Okay, boss. These days we are even afraid to do our job because people are mixing their regular waste with infectious waste. Eh? Oh, uh, big English. Which one too is infectious waste? You see, for instance, you have your used face mask in the bin together with other waste. Who knows if that is infected with coronavirus? Waste collectors like myself can easily get infected when we come for the baller. True, but if not in the bin, then where should we put the used face mask? You have to double bag your used face mask, face shields, and cough tissues in a separate rubber, separate cryer, so that waste collectors know these can be infectious and collect them with extra care. This way, you are helping us to be protected. Mmm, it makes sense. Coco, let's do that from now on. Let's support our waste collectors to be safe by segregating infectious waste mm. from general waste. We have new addictive series for you on DSTV. A country invaded. Another surrender. What will America do? So much has changed. No, you've changed. Go, go, go! Love a good British drama. World on Fire's intimate portrayal of the effects of wartime on ordinary people may be your next favorite thing to watch. Or catch Stargirl, a stellar series around a teenage superhero who is a shining beacon in the darkest of times. True crime fans, you'll be fascinated by this brilliant federal agent as she dives into the dark criminal underworld. And join some of Power's most controversial characters in this spin-off. Series definitely worth checking out on DSTV. Acrofund Limited, located in Acropole in the eastern region, is a 1D1F initiative funded by Ghana Exim Bank that deals in poetry. This venture will create direct and indirect jobs for Ghanaians and help Ghana realize the vision of becoming an export-driven economy. A feat that will reduce to over $375 million spent on poultry importation. Like Acro Farms, there are other businesses being set up across the country under the 1D1F initiative, such as Casado Ropa, Ekunfi, Pharmaceuticals, and more local businesses which have created jobs and expected revenue. At Ghana Exim Bank, we call this the Made in Ghana 4P. Produce, promote, purchase, and prosper. Give us a people who believe in the Ghana beyond aid. Then let's prosper as a nation by producing, promoting, and purchasing our products. Let's support Made in Ghana and let's take Made in Ghana to the world. One district, one factory, Ghana at work. Ghana Exim Bank, facilitating Ghana's international trade. Oh, a 
Baba. Play the golden goal on Bet Planet today with just 20 Ghana cities. You could win a Mercedes and a 100,000 Ghana city worth of prizes. This advert has been vetted and approved by the Gaming Commission of Ghana. Bet responsibly, not for persons below the age of 18. You welcome back to the City Newsroom. Now, Vice President Dr. Mahmoud Bamiya has announced that over 80% of high schools and colleges of education across the country have Wi-Fi installed on their campuses. The Vice President says the project is part of the free Wi-Fi government is providing in all educational institutions across the country. Well, inaugurating a library and an ICT center in Abuso, Kanya's part of a store of the Great Accra region, the vice president said all schools, universities, colleges of education, as well as district education offices will be connected to a free Wi-Fi by next year. The president tasked the Minister for Education and the Minister for Communications to push to make sure all of our senior high schools, as well as all the 46 colleges of education, are all connected to the internet, free Wi-Fi. So this has been started, and I'm happy to tell you that so far, more than 80% of all our senior high schools in the country have now been given free Wi-Fi. It's massive. It's a major investment, and in addition, the 46 colleges of education, I think that is also, it's, and it will be launched very soon. And I have to congratulate the Minister for Education, Dr. Matthew Poku Prempe, uh, Napo, we call him, as well as the Minister for Communications, Mrs. Ursula Ousu Ekufo. They've done a great job. We were thinking this will be finished in our next term, God willing, but they have virtually completed the work before the end of this term. And it's, it's massive. You can just imagine the doors it's going to open for our children to access information to get uh, so much knowledge. Now, President Tekufuado says government will deal ruthlessly with persons plotting to foment trouble in the December polls. The president also reassured Guineans of a violent free election and urged all to come out and vote in the December polls. City News' Ashanti Regional Correspondent Hafiz Tijani reports. The president made the remarks when he addressed a deba of chiefs and people of Jwasu in the Ashanti Achim South District as part of his tour of the Ashanti region. <laughs> One year, the Bassa Bassa Bebo Memono, one of the Bussa Abai, it will to me Wagana. Anyone may be a Benya Quine, a Cacotto, a Bano, a Sumje Mono, Bienya Quine, a Cacotse, Nadre. The president, as part of his tour, commissioned a 12 unit classroom block for the Jasu Senior High and Technical School. He earlier commissioned a six unit classroom block for the Apraman Basic School in the Kumasi Metropolis. Education Minister Matthew Opoku Prempe, who was part of the entourage, called on Ghanaians to vote massively for the president so the country continues to enjoy Nanado's good policies on education. <laughs> Free. 
The paramount chief of the Bompata traditional area, Nana Ifa Apenten, urged residents within the Asante Achim district to go all out in their numbers to vote in the December polls. <laughs> Well, you're still watching the City Newsroom on CTTV. Still ahead, government rescues over 2,000 Ghanaians stranded in Lebanon. Please stay tuned. We'll bring you the details right after this break. Order the Huawei Y9A before 1st October and get a free band for E and a gift box. Terms and conditions apply. The Confucius Factory is a 1D1F initiative funded by Ghana Exim Bank. Each juice brand, a Confucius juice, is made from fresh pineapple and its quality is impeccable. All raw materials used in this production are purchased here in Ghana. The entire value chain has helped the community prosper by creating jobs for many Ghanaians from farming, distribution and retail. Due to its great taste and brand promotion, a Confucius juice is available in supermarkets and shops all over Ghana. And just like a Confucius juice factory, there are other factories set up across the country under the 1D1F initiative. In Areas such as share production, poultry, from citicles, sweet potatoes, avocado, tomatoes, mangoes, and more local businesses which are creating jobs and expected revenue. At Ghana Excellent Bank, we call this the Made in Ghana 4P. Produce, promote, purchase, and prosper. If as a people we believe in the Ghana beyond aid, then let's prosper as a nation by producing, promoting, and purchasing our own products. Let's support Made in Ghana and let's take Made in Ghana to the world. One district, one factory. Ghana at work. Ghana Excellent Bank. Facilitating Ghana's international trade. Hello, my brother. Hey, it's been a long while. Your house, the bill. I use the finest materials for this building. I can see that. But my brother, you know, we just last year you built this house. Oh, yeah. When the wall started peel off like banana due to rising dam. My brother, that's been my issue. I've tried so many things, but nothing works. You know what? They even use that black rubber thing. Only before the concrete casting. You mean that boiler rubber? Oh. My brother, you would have saved yourself the stress if only you used Visqui DPM from Vertigo Limited. Really? That'd be what my puppy used for house. And over so many years, the house still did come up. For purchases and inquiries, contact Ventigio Limited at Spinters Road, Accra, or in Kumasi at Kumasi Kwaraso. Vince DPM, no size. Thank you, sir. Hello, my name is Samuel Furi, a film actor and a film director. Because of the nature of my job, the taste for quality things is endless. Quality phones, quality laptops, quality TV sets. Let me show you my secret. Here is Franco Trading Enterprise. My secret for quality laptops, quality phones, quality TV sets, accessories, come on, external hard drive, pen drive, name it. For bulk purchase and retails, come to Franco Trading Enterprise. They'll reduce the price for you. Franco Trading Enterprise. Home quality. Dance the night away with some real funky shows this September on GoTV. 
and get hip and fabulous with some Niger food to whet your African appetite. Oh, uh, why don't we eat? It's all mind over matter when you upgrade to GoTV Plus or GoTV Max. It takes a brilliant mind to take down an insane street smart criminal. Stay connected or upgrade to GoTV Plus or GoTV Max for access to real groovy shows. We're putting the funk in entertainment. GoTV. Live it. Love it. Many thanks for your time. Over 2,200 stranded Ghanaians in Lebanon have been evacuated by the government between the months of June and September. Well, this is as a result of the inhumane treatment that was being meted out to them in their bed to seek greener pastures in that country. Speaking to journalists on efforts by government in evacuating the Ghanaian nationals from Lebanon, Ghana's ambassador to Lebanon, Winfred Hammond, said the exercise was in response to appeals by the affected persons to be rescued by government. Following complaints of abuse and unfavorable treatment by Ghanaian citizens who were engaged in domestic works in Lebanon, government began their evacuation in batches from June 2020. The effort was supported by the MP for Asin Central, Kennedy Japan, with an amount of $428,000. His gesture enabled the government to further evacuate more stranded Ghanaians in Lebanon who were being maltreated by their employers. Currently, 2,262 Ghanaian nationals have been evacuated from Lebanon by the government at a cost of $1.6 million. Why did we get into the state of calling SOS for, to evacuate as many as 2,262 people between June 19th and September 18th? These are the number of people that have been evacuated from Lebanon to Ghana. We had nine flights, I'm sure this is unprecedented, three of which were paid flights, but six of these flights were fully chartered, government-sponsored flights. Narrating the ordeal to the media, some of the evacuees advised persons with the intent of seeking job opportunities outside the country to have a renewal of mind. I went to Lebanon for a company work and I ended up as a house help. The treatments were very bad. I didn't receive my salary. I spent one year in Lebanon. I came back home empty-handed. I would wish everyone to take my experience as an advice to help every Ghanaian lady not to embark on this journey. According to Ghana's ambassador to Lebanon, Winfred Hammond, many citizens in Lebanon do not have the proper documentations that allow their stay in the country. He lamented the use of unapproved routes in traveling outside Ghana. When I checked the records, we gave visas last year to only, was it 130-something? 135 of them <clears throat> were the only visas we gave. But we have on record, as of last year, 9,800 Ghanaian domestic workers. Last year alone, I believe those who went were about three to 4,000. So where did they get their visas from? And how did they get past Kotoka International Airport to get to their destination? The Lebanese ambassador to Ghana urged persons seeking to travel to Lebanon to acquire the necessary documents to avoid being maltreated by Lebanese. And that's how we end this edition of the City Newsroom. You can log on to our website, citynewsroom.com, for more information on our top stories and more. Subscribe to CityTube on YouTube for more exclusive video content from City TV. Download the City Newsroom app from the Google Play Store or the App Store and keep updated on the go. 
And you can also watch City TV on DSTV channel 363 and on Go TV channel 182. Happy birthday, Nana Tufo. Grateful, Zoe. <laughs> my name is Zoe Abubedu Ado. And mine is Nana Tufo Many thanks for watching.